Okay, for today, it's the law of cosines. You already knew the law of sines. What looks different about this than the way I taught you in the first place? Yes, sir. The sine of the angles on the bottom is at the top. Yeah. What the heck? They're all flipped over. Did I teach you wrong? Nope. Either way works. So if you want to put the a on, little a on top and the sign of the big A on the bottom. The other thing that's different is this is big A, this is big B, and you might be like, did they make the shapes funny? Well, they're just using Greek letters. And this is what they used for the C. All right, so if you see that, even on tests, you have to understand that that's synonymous with like A, B, and C. Welcome. All right, so next up. Besides the fact that the law of signs, you two that are just getting here, please pay attention to this. The law of signs can be upside down, and sometimes that's handy. Why would you ever care? If you're solving for a side, do you get it would be nice if it was on top? Let me show you the end game. If you have a side like A over the sign of like 20 uh, equals... Uh, 20 over sine of 56. This will save you a whole step if you made the thing upside down in the first place. Because to solve for A now, you just have to times by sine of 20 on both sides and A is alone. That's a lot faster. Okay, so using the upside down law of sines will save you time if you want to find a side. Okay, so the thing you want to find is the thing you should put on top. If you weren't trying to find a side, put that on top. Now, you can't flip over part of the formula and, and not flip over the other part. You have to have the whole formula upside down if you're going to do it that way. Okay, so whatever you want to find, put that on top. All right, down to the law of cosines. How is it different than what I said? I told you this one. I don't want you to think I told you wrong. I didn't. A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C equals C squared. But they have shown you two other ways you could do it. That is extremely confusing to me. And so I just recommend that you memorize it one way. And the only thing that's challenging about this is that if you only memorize it one way, and I wouldn't want to get all confused with three different ways to memorize it, then the angle has to be C. You see what I'm saying? If you memorize it this way and this way, you can have the angle be A or B. How, the angle has to be C. So if they give you a triangle, 120 and 8 and 7, and you can figure out this side here, the law of cosines can do that, but the other one can't. What letter do you want right here? C. So if the drawing has an A there, what do you do? You just say, I don't want it to be A. Oh, I'm going to call it C. Do you get what I'm saying? You just change the letter's name. You can totally do that. I mean, why would they have to even use A, B, and C? Maybe the drawing is going to be labeling it with R, F, and Q. I mean, they don't have to pick A, B, and C to be nice to you. So you have to know that the formula you've got memorized for law of cosines needs to have C right here. Okay, so you can say, well, they used to be called RFQ, but I know that this needs to be C. And I'm going to pick the other two as A and B. All right, I'd like you to do this one and figure out how long that side is right there. Law of cosines. So sketch the triangle. Got a little messy, I'm gonna clean this up. It's gonna be A. A squared plus B squared minus two AB. All little letters so far. Cosine of big C equals little C squared. Only angle in the whole thing. That's why we need it to be C. It can't be F.
So what's A and B? It doesn't really matter if you use seven or eight. Look, if you use seven here and eight here, do you get I could just rearrange them and it'd be the exact same answer? And if I use seven here and eight here, it doesn't matter. Seven times eight or eight times seven, same answer. Okay, so the A and the B don't matter. You can pick either one for either one. All right, so I'm gonna use A is eight, so I'm gonna go 64 squared plus seven squared. Sorry, not 64 squared, 64 and seven squared is 49 minus two times seven times, technically it's eight times seven. Won't really matter in the answer. Cosine of 120, all equals C squared. Do you get that's just one big thing you need to put into the calculator? But I'm gonna count it up. How many keystrokes are you gonna have to do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 to hit cosine, 13, 14, 15, and then hitting equals is 16. You have to hit 16 things right in a row. And that's hard. It's really easy to make one mistake if you're typing 16 things in a row. Exactly right. And then at the end, you've got this big number equals c squared. And then what do you have to do at the very end? How do you finish it? Yes, sir. Take square root. Square root. So what did you get for this big number here, Jacob, that before you took the square root? Uh, 169. Can anybody verify 169? Awesome. Then, does anybody have the square root of 169 memorized? 13. 13 is correct. So C equals 13. Now, technically, right here, we just did the square root of a variable. It's technically the absolute value, which technically means you should be able to say 13 and negative 13. But in the context of a shape, could you have a side length of negative 13? No. So, let me throw that one out. Okay. So... Yay, you did your first law of cosines problem. You understand how that worked? Now, if you're like, oh, I didn't get 169. Well, then you didn't type it in right. Try it again. Figure out how to type these in, because you're going to have to. Law of cosines is the most powerful one. Law of sines is kind of a sideshow at the end, because it's like in the hard problems, you use a law of cosines almost every time. And then sometimes you use a law of sines. When, when it's like, ooh, sweet, this is an easy one. I'll use a law of sines. Okay. So let's just make sure you get that setup thing. Is this one here gonna work with a right triangle? Does it look like a right triangle? No, so right away I gotta either use law of sines or law of cosines, okay? Oh, but wait, there's one more thing. There's one more formula that you have to know. Law of, law of sines, law of cosines, and one more. And that's for figuring out the area of these triangles. So let's say I said this, this looks to me like about 70 degrees. And this looks like about 70 degrees. And then this last angle here would have to be what? 40. 40. 40. Okay, 70, 70, 40. One thing, you always have to have a side. You can't do these unless you know a side. All right, so I gotta give you a side. So let's say I say this side here is gonna be 10. Now, I can figure out anything from this, but so far, I've asked you to only to figure out things like um, angles and sides. But what about the area? All right. Well, first, let me ask you this. If you wanted to figure out these sides that are left, let's call this A and let's call this B. Why did I do that? Because I think this should be C. You know why? Because it's the angle that has the side across from it. So I know which formula to use. Do you? Which would you like to do? The one that's got four parts or the one that's got 16 parts? Probably got to pick the four. So what, what formula is that? Law of sines. Law of sines would be easier. Okay. Um, and then how about the... What, what, what if I wanted to use a law of cosines? You could. You could absolutely do look a law of cosines. You could do that. But you definitely want to be careful which angle you picked to be C. Remember how you can pick any angle you want? I might have said this was C, but you can say I want that one to be C. The angle that you focus on in the law of cosines 
has to be C. All right, so let's just uh, actually finish this one. Everybody use the law of sines and figure out, let's go with A. Everybody figure out A using the law of sines. This is the part where a graphing calculator would be very smart. Why? Because your iPad's wonderful, but you can't use it on the test. And typing it in on the iPad uses a completely different order. So I'm warning you about this. Don't tell me on the day of the test, but I don't know how to use this calculator. Well, it'll be sad, but you're gonna get them all wrong then. I am not going to be letting you use your iPad just because you don't know how to use the calc. No problem. So borrow one, but you gotta give me something. My keys like that. Excellent, there we go. Let me know if you need the calc. There you go. Now remember, I only have like four or five of these. And so that means, if it turns out on test day, six people need a calculator, it's not just gonna be who's fastest up here. But some of you might get stuck without a calc, so bring your own. If it's a money issue, let me know. I can help you by letting you borrow one for the whole semester. I have extras at my house, in my garage, okay? So I know it's probably more likely to just be a forgetting thing, but. Some kids just don't get around to telling mom and dad, like, hey, it'd be really handy to have one of these calculators. But if it's, again, financial need situation, I will hook you up. Just gotta talk to me. All right, so Isaac, I'd like you to set it up for us. What over what and did you remember that we're trying to solve for a side and therefore did you remember that we can flip the law of signs over? Awesome, then tell me what you did. Ten over sine. Sorry, I got over sine of seventy. Keep going. And then to solve a, I wrote x over sine of seventy. We can just use a over sine of seventy. And if you just step back for a second and think about this, what does that have to be? Ten over sine of seventy equals what over sine of seventy? 10. If two angles are the same, then the sides across from them are going to be the same. That's an old rule from geometry that you might have forgotten. Final answer, A is 10. It's got to be. You could have done this with a whole bunch of multiplying and stuff, but hey, cool, A is 10. All right. Any questions about law signs? So why would I ever use a lot of cosines? I wouldn't have, because it's easier to use a lot of signs here. When do you ever use the law of cosines? When you don't have enough info. This is a 91 degree angle, darn it. Otherwise, it would have been so easy to use sine, cosine, and tangent. You know, right angles are awesome. But if this is 12 and this is 5, figure out how long that is. It's really close to 13, but it's not 13. You'll have to use the law of sines. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm changing it, I'm sorry. I'm gonna make this 14. It's gonna freak you out too much. It's gonna come out to 13 if you round it. And that's gonna bother you because it'll look like it's a right triangle. Change the number on the bottom to 14, please. Okay, so the next little step in the process here, you've got to get the letters straight. 91 has to be a certain letter. What does it have to be? C. The other two, I don't care what you pick for A and B. It won't matter. I personally am going to go this one's A and this one's B, but it won't matter what you did. I think 14 squared is 196. Can anybody verify that? <coughs> Thank you. And then 5 squared is 25 minus 2 times uh, 14 times 5 times cosine of big of 91. You might be thinking, why are we solving for C? Like why don't I solve for like this angle over here? You can't. The law of cosines is only going to solve for one thing. 
And then you can use the law of sines. All right, so one thing at a time. How long is this side over here? Well, you probably got this big number right here. Jacob, what'd you get for the big number before you square rooted the big number? Really? Exactly 81? Doesn't feel right. Okay. Can anybody tell me what they got for their number there? Soren? I got uh, Anybody verify 223? Okay, there we go. Jacob, try typing it in again. I don't know what you did wrong, but you need to figure it out because it'll be a big deal later. Square root, square root. Final answer, Oscar, do you have the square root of 223? Yeah, it's 14.95. 95. Okay. So this side, 14.95. What if that isn't what they asked? What if they asked for angle B? Do you get the law of cosines doesn't solve for angle B? But now we can use the law of cosines. So a lot of times you start with the law of cosines. I think I just said it wrong. You start with the law of cosines and you follow up with the law of sines. Because now we have an angle on the side across from it. And now we can use the law of sines as our second step. Man, you know you're doing a serious math class when you do a 16-part formula to get the first half of the answer. Everybody figure out angle B for me, please. Angle B is in banana. Now, since I'm solving for an angle, I'm going to put that on top. If I had wanted to solve for a side, I would have put the side on top. So now I'm going to be versatile about how I do my love signs. You can always stick to the original formula. It works. It's just got extra steps. And now if I was putting this on a calculator, before I like grab my calc, I would do this. And now I know that at the end I can do inverse sine of all that. So I want to get that number and then do inverse sine of it. Remember that little tip about using A and S. I can use the whole decimal that way and it's less of a pain in the butt. So I can go inverse sine of second answer. Did you get 19.54? Raise your hand if you had 19.54. Nice! B is 19.54 degrees. Okay, that is a very typical question that you have to use law of cosines and law of sines together to get the final answer, all right? Okay, so let's go through this. This is about that last three problems on the quiz. So, frankly, I don't, I don't like the flowchart that much, so I'm going to just tell you how I would solve these every time if I were you. I'd figure out how long the mystery side needs to be to make it a right triangle. If I know that, as soon as I know how long this side has to be to be a right triangle, that's the smallest it can be. Okay, so if this side is, for instance, 12. Everybody write this on your notes. If that's 12, and this side is the red side, if it turns out... Actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to say change this to a 13. If that's a 13, and this side is a 5, that's the smallest that side can be. 
because if you make it any shorter, it won't connect and keep the same angle. I mean, if, assuming this angle is fixed and it can't move, then if this side's any shorter than five, you won't have a triangle anymore. What if it's bigger than five? Then you have the case where you can have two answers. If this is bigger than five, you could tilt it this way or this way. So six would work, seven would work, eight would work, nine, 10, 11, 12 would work, but why was 13 different? Why can't 13 be the ambiguous case number? Yes, Tyler. Because if it was 13, it would just be a 518. If it was 13, which way would I have to draw it? Could I draw it to the left? No, I'd have to draw it to the right. And it would have to only be this way. Because if it's 13 long, then you can't draw it in both directions. It won't work. It would be right on top. Think about it. If the other, the other one would be like right here, which is on top of the first one. It wouldn't be a triangle. So all of a sudden it goes from there was two possibilities. But if it's the same length as this other one, then there's back to only one possibility. Can it be bigger than that one? Yes. What if that side is bigger than 13? What if it's like 14 or 15? Well, it isn't ambiguous. It has to be going out this way then. It could be like 17, it doesn't matter. It can be big, really, really big. So if we know that this side shortest was five and that 13 is the limit on the other side, then you know that anything between five and 13, like say seven, could be drawn two different ways. That's called the ambiguous case. Okay, so if I were in your shoes and I had a question about this, I'd wanna know what's the shortest this side could be? Make it a right triangle and figure that out. So let's do something like that. Let's just see if I had a 40 degree angle and this was 10, tell me how long the green side would be if it's a right triangle. <coughs> now you might be thinking, you only gave me two pieces of info server, that's not enough. Nope, I actually gave you three. Because I said it was a right triangle. I used to say, if it's a right triangle, you only need two pieces of information. Uh, I don't like that. It's actually three pieces of information, because if it's a right triangle, that's a piece of information. Okay. By now, you should be pretty darn good at this. Let's say I say this is A. You're supposed to be able to pretty quick go, oh, sine of 40 equals A over 10, and then times both sides by 10, and you get 10 sine 40, and that's how you find it. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Let's just see, maybe some of you used like the law of cosines or something, uh, and you, you don't know what 10 sine of 40 is. 10, sine, 40, enter. It's 6.4 approximately. So tell me, what side lengths for that green side would make it ambiguous? Like you couldn't tell how the triangle was drawn. Yes? between 6.4 and 10. And it can't be 6.4, because that isn't ambiguous. It'll be a right triangle. And it can't be 10, because if it is 10, it won't be ambiguous. The 10 side will have to go this way, and you'll have just one triangle, okay? When I say ambiguous, that means there's two possible triangles. All the other triangles, there's only one triangle. Okay. So that's to cover that last question of the uh, quiz that we had on Friday a little bit better. And there's definitely something on the test that's about the, that because we spent so much time on it. All right, so now let's just do one. Everybody do this red one right here. I know you're going to get some stress from drawing it. I'd start with a horizontal line, always. Then I would draw the angle at about 60, which I don't know exactly what 60 is. I'm gonna say, you know what 45 should be, right? 
So just make it bigger than 45 and less than 90. And we'll call it 60. And if this has got to be A, then this has got to be A, little a. And I drew it as a right triangle. Is it for sure a right triangle? No, I don't know. I'm going to find out. Maybe it's like this. And B is 4. So this is 4. How do I know that side's the other side that's given? Because look, we don't know this, how long this side is. It could be two different lengths. So we can't say that that's for sure 4. All right. So that's 6 side. Was it ambiguous or not? Well, the way you can tell. So I'm going to erase the 6, and I'm going to say, how long would this be right here if it was a right triangle? If you figure that out, then you'll know whether 6 makes it a right triangle. Maybe it's not even long enough to be a triangle. Maybe it's the ambiguous case. So see if 6 makes it a right triangle. Let's see if 6 doesn't even work. Let's see if 6 is the ambiguous case. Yes, sir. There's nothing wrong with that. You're, I think what you're doing is using radians. That's my theory. Check the, check the mode. Huh. I've never seen that before. You typed in sine 60 and it, it said square root 3 over 2 is the answer? Whoa. I mean, it's right. I'm just trying to figure out why it doesn't instead of giving you a decimal. So the reason he was getting that is he's got a cool calculator, but it's not the TI-84 or TI-83 that, that I've been used to for... This is kind of weird. Since I started teaching, which is a long time ago, the same TI style has been the, the thing. Like, think about anything else the same for 30 years. <laughs> anyway... It, they have created a classic calculator there, and it's really hard for them to like bust out of it because then all of a sudden they've tried before, and then the teachers don't know how to work both calculators. So it really comes down to the teachers. If they could like convince everybody to you know, change over to some other calculator, that'd be really hard to do. Okay, so here's how I'd do it. I'd say, I don't know what this, but I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it uh, Q, just to make it a different letter that I'm not using normally. Sine of 60 equals Q over 4. 4 sine of 60 is how long that thing would be if it's a right triangle. Okay. 4 sine 60. And that would be 3.46. 3.46. Okay, that is clearly... If this is 3.46, 6 is way bigger than that. And 6 is bigger than this side. So the only way I could have drawn it, in fact, I should have noticed that right away. 6 is bigger than that side. So this thing has to go out this way. It's not ambiguous. It can't be like the green lines because it's too big. If it's bigger than this side here, then it goes way out there, and there's only one possible way to draw that triangle. Yes? Yes? What would have been the ambiguous ones? Anything between 3.46 and 4. The only ones that would have been ambiguous would have been between 3.46 and 4. Yes? Still got a question or is that it? Uh, yeah. Okay. So anything between the smallest it can be, which is if it's straight up and down, and this number. That's what makes it ambiguous. Okay, moving on. Uh, everybody get to this and just figure out which of these... You could not use the law of signs on. Maybe it's all of them. But maybe one of them can be used, done using the law of signs. Highlight the one that you think, the ones that cannot be solved with the law of signs. Highlight them and compare with the kid next to you. Pick the one or two that you know cannot be done with the law of signs. All right. Compare it to the person next to you. See what you think.
Talk, talk to the person next to you. Yes. All right. Val, what did you guys say? Do you think they all can't be used with the law of cosines? Or sorry, law of sines? All right. This one cannot for sure. You are correct. But there are others that cannot be solved with the law of sines. Okay, what else? Oscar. You can't solve A. You're right. A cannot be done with the law of sines. Why? You need an angle and a side across from it. And you might be like, but you don't have an angle and a side across from it here, but what's the catch? You do know this angle, don't you? Because you got two of the angles. That means you know all three angles. So you do have an angle and a side across from it. So this one, you can use the law of sines. L-O-S, law of sines. Okay, moving on. That cell phone needs to go in the backpack. All right, of these three, they have just rewritten how you could do the law of cosines. You want to memorize that instead? Yeah, no thanks. I like the one where it looks a squared plus b squared equals c squared with a little modifier. It's just the law of, or it's just the Pythagorean, but then you add a little element into it. Okay, so on this one, is this one a good one for the law of sines? No. So then what do you have to use? All cosines. All right, one last thing. I hinted at this before, but I wanted to say it now. There's also a way to find the area of this without having the height, which is pretty cool. And this one's going to come in handy on the uh, ACT. I'm not saying it comes up a lot. It actually doesn't, but it could. And here it is. You ready? Write this formula down for the area. If you want the area of the triangle, this is a big topic on the test. You got to know area of triangle. The area of a triangle is one half a b sine of big C. And it kind of rhymes a little bit with the law of cosines, but you have to know that one. And I can tell now that I wrote it in a light enough font that nobody can read it, so I'm going to try again. Area one half a b sine of big C. So what do you think is C? There's no letters on your server. Can't use your formula. No. Use the same rule as you would for the law of cosines. The one angle they give you, it should be a side angle side situation like this. And that should be C. And if this one's C, then the other two are, numbers are A and B. And it doesn't matter which one's which. So would you please use your calculator and figure out the area of that triangle? One half AB sine C. So easy. There is another formula, but honestly, it's a bonus. You don't need it. This one, yeah, you pretty much need it. You could drop a hypotenuse uh, or drop a, a height. I'm not a geometry teacher, sorry. Don't know the right way to say it, but you could do this, but it would be... I don't even know how to tell you all the steps for that because this is so easy. One half times, I'm going to use 16.7, times 13.5, times sine of 36. And it's just a, can you type it in your calculator problem then? Okay. Max, can you tell me what you got? All right, can anybody verify 66.26? Okay, awesome. That's the area of the triangle. Never had to figure out the height. Sweet. That's your first triangle where you've ever figured out the area without knowing the height. All right, now go over to this one. All of a sudden, we have all the sides and no angles. Can you do it? Yes, you can. Remember, if you've only got the angles, you can't do the problem. You have to have at least one side. But if you got all the sides... You can figure out the angles. Okay, so which one do you want to know? Because why does that matter? Because you have to call it C. And the law of cosines is going to come in and save the day. 
So which angle do you want to know? Let's just say we wanted to know that one. But wait, before we just arbitrarily pick one, that angle there would be the smallest angle. Do you know why? It's because it's across from the smallest side. Very good. Okay. This angle here would be the biggest angle if I chose that to be C. Why? Come on, you should be able to learn from what we said before. Biggest side. It's across from the biggest side. Okay. So I'd like you to figure out that angle. Angle C. The one I just called C. The biggest angle. Everybody figure that out. Use the law of cosines. And a calculator for sure because, holy cow, no fun. If you had to do this by hand, holy cow. I if there's any human on earth that could get this to the, like, hundredth place. Because it involves doing an inverse cosine. Holy cow. Yes? Uh, can we use that other cosines formula on the last year? The one for the area? 1 half AB sine C? No, the one that had cos C equals A squared plus B squared minus C over G. Oh, if you want to use a variation of the law of cosines that you personally memorize, I'm okay with that. But I will tell you, it's really not that hard to do it using the regular law of cosines. A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of big C equals C squared. Then I got to pick A, B, and C. I'm going to pick this one to be A and this one to be B. But if you did it the other way, who cares? The answer will be the same. I subtracted these two from both sides. Who got 113.14? Tweet. If you didn't, I feel for you. You had to do 16 parts to just start this formula. And then there was a ton of steps. I've got mine up here. Okay. That is everything. You 
have learned everything. You're not ready yet, but we're getting close-ish. So I think we have one more day where we technically teach you that area formula that I already told you. Um, and then I think we have a review, and then I think we have a test. I think the test is Wednesday. It's maybe Thursday. The earliest it would be is Wednesday. But I'll for sure tell you if it's Wednesday. I'll always give you one day notice on the test, of course. All right, so. Did you do some homework? <laughs> yeah. This may be the hardest test you've had in pre-calc so far. I'm not saying it's impossible. Now, if you've been following me and you always get it right when I ask what you get, and you're getting them right, then don't worry. But there's going to be a lot of people where they're going to go, holy crap, this trig stuff is... Like, I don't understand it at all because it's different. Why? It's got a bunch of formulas you have to know, and it's all about geometry. We pretty really much never did geometry in the first semester. So some people are going to be bad at it because of the geometry part. And some people are going to be bad at it because they never really understood what sine, cosine, and tangent meant. Still can't do Sokotoa. Okay? That's the fundamental that everybody's got to have. So. so anyway, I'm just a little nervous about it, and I'm nervous that some of you aren't doing your homework, and then that means so really bad. All right, so let's look at the homework together. Here's the first one. And if you're like, I don't understand where to put stuff. Well, how about this? You got to know that this is C, big C. And if they just gave you A, B, and big C, which of these angles looks like it's 59? I mean, don't put it here. That's like bigger than 90. It's going to mess your head up. Can't put the 59 there. Which one? Well, this one looks really small. It looks like 30 about. It's less than a 45. It's got to be this one. This one's the 59.3, so this one's got to be C. 59.3 degrees. So figuring out where what letter goes where is so important when you're dealing with formulas. Because if you get the wrong letter in the formula, you know, it's going to hurt. All right. And then they didn't give us side C, so I can put a little C over here. They did give us side A and B, and the server keeps saying that A and B don't matter. You put them wherever you want. That's pretty much true. So I'm going to call this one big A and this one big B. So little B would be 12, and little A would be 7. Now that I get the picture, I can see this is not a good one for law of sines. Big surprise. So they say use law of cosines. I don't have an angle on the side across from it. So I'm going to use the law of cosines. And then from there, it's just knowing the law of cosines and sticking things in. And there's the answer key posted, of course. All right. Be smart. Do some practice. Uh, and that's all I've got for you for today.